Hello, my name is Pierre Croiset. I'm the founder of a little company based in France, uh, which name is Les Decoders Associés, and uh, we are specialized in uh, digital mediation for cultural institutions, and we work on the uh, heritage field. So I'm going to share you my PowerPoint now. I think it's working, that's okay. So I'm here to talk about uh, a VR experience developed for a public authority in France, Grand Cognac Agglomeration. And uh, the topic is uh, the time traveling, of course. Um, of course, because uh, VR experience are often based on uh, travel, time travel uh, experience. So it's uh, an historical mediation for the general public, as you can uh, read it on the screen. Um, I'm going to tell you about this experience. Um, first, the client. The client is a local authority, um, which name is Grand Cognac Agglomeration Community in France. So if you don't know where Cognac is, it's in the north of uh, Bordeaux in the southwest, uh, southwest of uh, France. And um, this uh, operation implied uh, several providers, Polymorph, uh, Polymorph Software based in Rennes, France also, Argraphic and Patrimoine, one of the leading company in 3D reconstruction applied to uh, heritage and culture in France, and of course, Les Decoders Associates. So um, the order was, uh, uh, very specific because um, the aim was to reconstruct in 3D six uh, eras, um, very representative of the history of the territory, with uh, several objectives and specificities. Uh, the, the general objectives of uh, that experience was to uh, merge people uh, in this uh, reconstruction and, and try to provide them um, a very uh, uh, gamey mediation, but uh, not a fault mediation. That means that uh, uh, this kind of mediation is always based on uh, scientific facts. And uh, the specificity was that for um, budget reasons, the Grand Cognac didn't want text or words because it would have implied translation in many languages and it was not just possible. So they chosen to uh, order you to work without any text and without any words. It's a big challenge. So what is the experience? The experience is based, as I've said it, um, on six reconstructions. I mean, 3D reconstructions uh, in VR. The gameplay, because the mediation wasn't um, imagined to be too much serious and a device of course a device able to work on um, well places where it is not always very uh, easy to provide vr experience we will see it next so what were the the six eras to be reconstructed uh, you can see it on the screen uh, first, the dinosaur. Why? Because on this territory, there is one of the most important uh, archaeology, archaeological area that concerns Cretaceous period. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, but <laughs> I think you understand what I'm talking about. It is uh, 140 million years before Christ, uh, before present time, sorry. And uh, the aim was to show what kind of uh, landscape and life was present at that moment. And of course, there were uh, plenty of dinosaurs. Uh, first period, Cretaceous. Uh, then Neolithic, uh, later, <laughs> uh, with uh, people which were working specially to build a pirogue. Um, I don't know if the word is correct, but uh, anyway, to, work, to, to, to create a, a sort of ship, you know. And um, the Neolithic period is uh, also in, interesting uh, for that uh, territory because um, it's the, the, the same rule. Uh, there is a very important archaeological era that uh, have shown that many people were living here. Uh, we are about 6,000 years uh, before present time. And then Renaissance, 
because you are in a country with uh, many churches, Roman churches, and it was very, well, very exciting to show um, the construction of the such uh, churches uh, on, the, on the Grand Cognac. Uh, then the, um, it was the Middle Ages, sorry. And then in the Renaissance with Francois Ier, because Francois Ier uh, was born in the, in the castle of Cognac. Uh, you didn't know that, huh? don't you? And, um, and uh, it was, uh, the idea was to show him uh, in um, very, uh, I don't know how to say it, in a, in, a, in, a, in a moment of his life when he was returning from Spain, uh, where he was a uh, prisoner of the King uh, Charles Quint. And um, on, on the way back, he stopped at Cognac Castle. And the idea was to, to show that very uh, uh, precise moment, a very precise moment of history, and try to build a little history around it. Then the 19th century, of course, with the uh, uh, industry of cognac. And then in uh, the 20th century, in the year 1930, to show uh, what, um, what was the, 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 the industry of cognac and how cognac was made in the 20th century. It's always the same nowadays. So it was a, a very, uh, very, very interesting to, to show it. Then the gameplay, what is the gameplay? The gameplay is very simple because as you have noticed it, this experience uh, is for general public, very general public, you know, children, adults, anyone. So the, the gameplay is to scan targets in the game. Uh, it could be a dinosaur, it could be Francois Premier, it could be a, a bottle of uh, cognac, doesn't matter. You have to target it because if you target it, you can unlock um, cards and you can unlock cards. And the game is to try to uh, match the, the cards because the, the mediation principle is based on the card association. And the, the associ um, when you associate, when you, 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 you match the cards, you obtain a message. So uh, for example, in the Cretaceous period with the dinosaurs, if you target two, di two different dinosaurs and get cards showing plants, uh, showing trees, for example, you will assume that those animals are vegetarians. The general idea is to send uh, very simple messages on often unrecognized subjects or very common cliche. In the Middle Age, uh, another example, the team is uh, at a church construction site and they have to figure out who does what by matching tools with figures. The most complicated scene to create was that of Renaissance, uh, as it illustrates very abstract notions and a very personal story of King François I. Uh, it was therefore necessary to aim uh, instead at the relationships between the characters. Uh, overall, audiences quickly understand the mechanics of the game and are fairly good at uh, digesting the messages. Uh, ideally, a human mediator is present at the end of the experience to answer players' question. It is, uh, well, I don't know if the word is uh, largely uh, shared, but it is a physical experience, okay? So one fundamental element, the space dedicated to the experience. Uh, it wasn't very easy in Cognac because we were inside some uh, museums uh, with, you know, collections that uh, was already installed and shown and the, the, the spaces uh, available to VR experiences were quite small. So we have to, to study the possibility, uh, the possibilities offered by the museums just to, to find some spaces uh, adapted to what we were um, doing. The, um, the, the, the team of the users um, can be, um, can, can be uh, organized with six people at a maximum. 
and uh, museum team is here to just, uh, of course, verify that everything is, uh, is going uh, okay. So they have a tablet, a control tablet, just to manage the experience and the move. And uh, they help the general public just to, to get the helmet on their heads. So you see, you need, uh, in any cases, a human, um, human facilities just to allow the experience. Because if you don't have these human facilities, I think uh, any VR experience in, in that kind of a, a museum of sites, um, any experiences is, uh, is possible. During the experience, you have a, a, TV, uh, a TV screen that uh, um, shows what the public is saying. It's a good means to help the museum's team uh, just to uh, control and to verify that everything is okay. And after the experience, I, I told you before, uh, physical mediation supports are available. It's screen, it's um, print, uh, sorry. And uh, the, the mediator or the museum's mediator are here just to answer the player's questions. So, what were the methods and what are the lessons? Uh, first of all, I think that you have as a provider to assimilate the workflow, um, to, to help the, your, your customer to assimilate your workflow. Of course, it's based on pre-prod, prod, post-prod, post and then operation. It's not a very common method for a local authority and public customers. So I think you have to help that kind of customer to really understand what that means to realize a VR experience, which in, well, I don't know if it's true, but uh, it, it, it has very, um, most, um, it does, uh, sorry, uh, many, um, many uh, similar ways of doing than, uh, than the movie industry. So pre-prod, prod, post-prod post operation. Then you have to, to take account of the animation of the scientific committee. Uh, as, uh, as I said it before, um, the mediation cannot be false. Uh, that means that sometimes, of course, because you're working on history, uh, you have a lot of, uh, you have lack of information. You don't know how really were the dinosaurs, but um, you have to try to represent it anyway. So it's very important to work very closely to the scientific committee just to uh, help them to get you the useful information in order to create the images, okay? The pictures and the pictures can be 100% um, uh, true, but they, they have just to be, well, uh, realistic. Uh, then you need also to have mediators in the production team, just to help to work with the scientific committee and try to uh, make all the people involved in the team understanding what you're going to do. Image at the end is the key, and it helps very often the scientific just to the scientists. Sorry, uh, it helps them to 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 improve uh, their message, improve their information. The gameplay in that project, where uh, you have understand, you have understood it, very, uh, very, very specific with no text, no audio. Well, at the end, this constraint is too strong <laughs> because uh, the, the the public um, doesn't really understand all you want to say uh, without text and without any audio. In the next step of that project, I think we have to work with our customer just to uh, help them understand that we need, <laughs> even if it's not a lot of, but we need text and we need audio. Because, for example, it helps to enrich the gameplay. Then, uh, concerning the operation phases, uh, the three keys are digital. If you have no humans around, it's not the same experience. You will be in trouble because you won't be able to help the public just to, to get the helmet on their head. Uh, you don't be there to answer the question. And it is very important for the general public 
uh, to, to have people to answer that question because at the end of the immersive VR experience, they have a lot of questions. Second key, the involvement of the customer team. It is linked with the first key, of course, but you have to, to um, motivate them and to help them understanding what you are doing because it's not always very um, evident. I don't know if the word is correct. It's a, word, it's a French word. It's, I don't know if it's very um, common for people working on a museum to be aware of what VR experiences are. Generally, uh, at that time, 2020, um, they, they have not a lot of practice of uh, that kind of uh, experience. So it's not very easy for them to really understand what you are doing and what at the end will be proposed to the general public. And three, the, th the third key is the material robustness. Of course, you have to uh, use a very good device. For that project, you've seen it in a, in a, in a slide, we used a Vive Focus Plus, which was the, the good material available for that project. We don't use Oculus Quest. I will answer the question after the presentation. So uh, now what I can say, just we're, we're at the end. Thank you for your attention and uh, sorry for my accent and my English, which is uh, sometimes very poor. Sorry for that and ready to answer the question.